Hey guys, thought I'd make a video on things I wish I knew before going into phalloplasty. Um, I'd say one of the biggest ones was a post-operative stench that I had. Uh, I was not expecting that at all. For the first five days in ICU, um, I really, as I mentioned, I was really out of it. I was well taken care of. Uh, the pain meds were fantastically taking care of me. So I wasn't really aware of much, but once I was discharged and I was at my post-operative post -operative facility, um, you know, coming back to my senses a bit and then I started smelling myself and it was alarming. I thought this cannot be normal. It wasn't just a stink, it was, I've never smelt it before. <laughs> it was like a open wound, an open genital wound smell. Um, and there, You've got a lot of dry blood on you. Um, you can't shower yet. Uh, I had it in my donor site for my left ALT, my left thigh, and my skin graft was from my right thigh. So it's just this tiny little thin sheet that they essentially like shave off and transfer to cover over here. Um, and I don't know the medical name, but it's some kind of a gauze or something that they, they place over here, um, like your raw flesh, and it heals to it. And um, it essentially kind of scabs into a massive big scab and this material is like stuck to your leg. It is now your leg. And uh, there's just a lot of, the scabbing is really thick because I think there's just like, just a lot of blood. And what happens is as it heals, it'll start curling up, yeah, yeah, yeah. curling up and uh, away from your skin, all the way around, from the out, from the outer part, the outer edges. And once it's curled up, you just kind of snip it away. So you keep snipping this away until, you know, it's all gone. And what's left underneath is your healed skin. It just looks like a red rectangle. Um, yeah, I might make a video showing you guys if you're interested. Um, so that's that. Uh, you might also get blisters on this site and just try really hard to leave them alone. Um, it'll help with scarring afterwards. It's essentially like a heat burn. Um, so I was told blisters are, that can happen. I was worried about that at first. Um, so yeah, with the, the whole stench thing, um, you know, I asked for wet wipes and I'm trying to carefully just like wipe myself away because I'm just so embarrassed by it and it's so dumb because there's nothing you can do about it um, but then I was told by a nurse that no this is absolutely normal stop wiping yourself and uh, we'll take care of you so that was nice um, really feel for the guy who sat next to me on the flight home I I don't know I can't really I don't even remember if it, who it was but yeah uh, when I got home and again this is a month after surgery so that it's getting better but as soon as I got home you know my wife was like oh no you're not our laundry no nope, they're not touching that the, the basket is mine your pile it's now under this window in the bedroom that now has to always remain open um, and I remember the first night I'm just <laughs> laying in bed and I'm so exhausted my eyes weigh a ton and I'm just about drifting off and all of a sudden I hear this psh, So I open one eye and there she is casually, you know, trying to discreetly Febreze me as she walks by. So that's how bad it was. Um, what's another thing? Okay, so oxybutin. Oxybutin is, I think, a med that's commonly prescribed for bladder spasms. And I think why we get these is from the catheter. Um, it's I think you know there it's just not happy having a catheter in there um, essentially there's a ball that's filled up with saline um, inside your bladder to stop it from pulling out um, so oxybutin is something that stops bladder spasms for me when I get I, I get I think two different kinds of bladder spasms one where um, I feel like I'm getting booted in the bladder just a quick pop boot um, it's, ugh, it hurts and then it's done, it's fine, whatever. Uh, the worst are when it feels like my bladder is releasing and like it will release and I need to go to the washroom right now. 
and these are the ones that drive me crazy. It happens quite often for me. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and you know, with the stricture, um, it sucks. So I'm using my catheter now. The catheter I have now, um, I always thought that it had to, like it was a bag and you start off with that and eventually um, after you're discharged, there comes a time when, you know, you're able to get up on your feet and actually out of bed, like we are able to yourself go to the washroom. Um, I flip, I switch to a flip flow valve. So, um, under if, yeah, actually, I won't test this out here. So anyway, um, instead of having this bag that it's kind of uncomfortable and uh, it's, you know, trying to get around with a um, catheter bag, um, but it's easier when you just have this little tube, you know, coming out of you with a foot, a clip, and you just clip it. That's how you empty out your bladder, put it away, and it's, it's not as bad or just in the way. Um, yeah, make, it made things a lot easier once I switched. Um, so the oxybutin. <laughs> Do you like my rants? Um, what it does is it paralyzes a bladder, therefore stopping spasms. Um, but what? But then it's paralyzing the bladder, and you're not able to void yourself. This isn't a problem when you're using your catheter, um, but I wish I knew this because uh, the facility I was at every kind of, I think it was four hours they were giving me one, and um, I just took it because I was being given it. And really, you do have to be, um, it's hard because you've had a major surgery, you're probably still in narcotics, but every time you're unsure about a med, do not take it until you ask for a clarification. Always make sure that you know why you're taking it, what it's for, um, mistakes happen. And you really gotta be vigilant looking out for yourself. Um, so anyway, um, I wish I knew this because when you start your void, uh, your trial void, uh, the first day that I started urinating, I probably I wish I'd stopped taking that med maybe two days prior to my start of my start trial uh, that way you know the oxygen can get out of my system and my bladder can kind of wake up so that it's ready um, it just led to me needing the catheter in a few weeks longer um, which yeah not fun but that's what I would do differently um, just something to talk to your doctor about if, if you're interested or curious about that, um, what else was there? Yeah, I expected this to be a long process, but I, th I think it's going to be a lot longer than I even um, in originally thought. Um, but that's okay. Like, you know what? Things are, um, it feels, it feels great. Um, really blessed to have been able to go through this experience. Um, yeah, and anyway, if you guys have any questions or whatever, uh, or want to see content on whatever, let me know. Bye.